It is safe to say that the crypto world was knocked off its balance by the spectacular collapse of Terra and UST. Investors were devastated and confused as to what the future held for them. With its market worth sliding from 18 billion to 1.2 billion in just one week, the massive sell pressure caused by big withdrawals from Anchor and subsequent swaps to other stablecoins pushed down the price of UST while leading Luna to enter a death spiral as individuals redeemed their UST. So how did the other stablecoins fare? Well, let's first take a look at Tether. Well, Tether's dominance in the business is undeniable. The Tether Foundation has previously stated that each USDT is backed by USD, allowing holders to redeem each USDT for USD one to one. Tether's reserves presently include commercial paper, money market funds, cash, bank deposits, treasury bills, and reverse repo notes, according to the most recent breakdown given by the company. While the reserves are not entirely in cash, the foundation has always guaranteed that its stablecoins may be redeemed through specific partner exchanges, and this has proven to be true. When UST began to fall, this statement was put to the test. Owing to investor skepticism about stablecoins, particularly USDT, many people began to switch from USDT to other stablecoins, which led to USDT trading at a discount to several other stablecoins for a period of time. Now, Tether claims that 2.3 billion USDT was redeemed between the 11th and 12th of May, adding that everything went through without a hitch. Between May 9th and 13th, the USDT market cap fell by 3.7 billion due to such redemptions. It peaked at 84 billion right before UST's downward spiral, representing a 5% drop. Daily trade volume also climbed dramatically, reaching 176 billion on May 12th. And this was much more than the normal trade volume of 40 to 60 billion on most days. Now, the depreciation of USDT would have been devastating as USDT is used to settle the majority of crypto deals and most crypto users possess USDT in some capacity. Now, let's talk about USDC. So, USDC's market capitalization increased significantly by 1.4 billion from May 9th to May 13th. USDC presently has a market capitalization of 52.3 billion, close to its all-time high. Daily volume increased by 480% from 6 billion on average to nearly 29 billion. A thing worth noting, however, was that there were massive withdrawals of USDC from smart contracts and the amount of USDC locked in smart contracts dropped significantly from 42% to 33%. Now, one theory is that investors were concerned that any yield farms in which they held USDC may have UST exposure, which would have a negative impact on their holdings. Okay, next, let's talk about BUSD. So BUSD's market capitalization fell slightly by about 1 billion from 17.8 billion within the same period of time before rebounding to its previous level. Now, BUSD's market cap has also continued to grow since then, standing at 18.2 billion at the time of writing, and we also noticed a 600% rise in volume. Now, while USDT suffered as a result of its shaky relationship with regulators and ambiguous support, other centralized stablecoins gained from the scenario. So USD coin, USDC, and Binance USD were two of the biggest gainers from this as investors rushed to these alternatives during times of crisis. Well then, what happened to DAI? Well, DAI's market capitalization fell by 25% between May 8th and 13th, from 8 billion to a little over 6 billion, and volume surged tenfold during this time, from an average of 400 million to over 4 billion. While DAI did not see a depreciation, it did briefly exceed $1 on May 12th, coinciding with the push out of USDT into other stables. Okay, then Frax, let's talk about Frax. So Frax, which is back to the tune of 80% by USDC, 
witnessed some volatility on May 12th when a number of users switched between stable coins. So Frax briefly plummeted below 0.97 but the built-in redemption mechanism kicked in and arbitrageurs acquired Frax each time it moved off PEG. Overall, the PEG was maintained, although Frax's market capitalization did suffer, decreasing by 1 billion between May 8th and 13th, which was a 38% loss. Now, the ripple effect of UST was noticed throughout the stablecoin ecosystem. Various algorithmic stablecoins lost their pegs with most still unable to restore them. The Waves Foundation Neutrino USD or USDN is one of the most notable victims. It is built similarly to USD and is yet to experience a death spiral despite trading significantly below peg at 0.76 on May 12th. It has subsequently rebounded to 0.97 at the time of writing, although it is still short of the $1 mark. Fei USD was also hit by a de-pegging event, falling to 0.97. Unlike USDN, however, it has managed to maintain its peg. Meanwhile, DAI, a phantom-issued stablecoin, was on the verge of a death spiral, but was saved when redemptions were halted. And while a disaster was averted, the token is presently selling at 0.60, much below a dollar. The system is currently planning a bond sale with the profits going towards making it a fully collateralized stable coin. Now, even if the loss of Terra and UST was only recently announced, new decentralized stable coins to run the cryptoverse have already been proposed. A Bitcoin backed stable coin generated using derivative contracts has been proposed by Arthur Hayes, co-founder of Bitmex. His reason for this is that Bitcoin is the most extensively used cryptocurrency. He does agree though that developing a fiat pegged stablecoin on a public blockchain will need numerous concessions. There have also been calls for Frax's model to be adapted, but with slight improvements. These include a fractional reserve backed with seniorage, Frax's current model, coupled with a money market. With a money market, Frax could potentially be minted with surplus collateral. Now, throughout the UST and Luna fiasco, it became evident that stable coins are not always what they appear to be. Although some protocols promise that their stable coin is pegged and secure, this is just, it's not always the case and investors should always be cautious. However, a decentralized stablecoin is still required to run Web3 and UST came the closest to attaining this goal. Many other decentralized stablecoins are expected to emerge to take advantage of the value left by UST, but it remains to be seen if investors will trust them as much as they did UST. So what are your thoughts on this unfortunate event? Share your investment strategies below in the comments. Are you hodling or are you cutting loss? Well, if you like to stay updated on all things crypto, make sure you click on that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for all the latest crypto updates. All right, see ya.